This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. A very good afternoon everyone and Jumbo Jumbo and welcome to a sunset drive from the Mara Triangle in Kenya. And we are showing you our first feathered friend that's a raptor out there and I'll be wanting to ask all of you what bird you think that is. My name is David and filming with me today is James. James, how are you sir? Can you see me? And James is telling me I'm not going to identify what that bird of prey is and we are going to ask all of you what bird do you think that is. So James is taking us to that bird and remember this is a very interactive safari that we do. So your questions and comments are very welcome using hashtag safari on Twitter. A bit chilly, I would say, for me, 17 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That, to me, by any standard, is a cold afternoon. I would only justify or explain that because of the rains we have had from yesterday and today, which would be marking the beginning of the short rains in Kenya. Now, to all of you, I want to tell me what raptor, what bird you think that is as she takes off. And you can see the clouds as James is following it. So James has done all he could to follow it up. And you can see those clouds there. They are quite dark and gray. An indication of rains at one particular time uh, before the end of tonight. Well, this is just the beginning. I'm not the only one out here in the field. There's a gentleman I have always claimed has one of the best smiles in Africa. And he would like to say hello to all of you. And look at that. I have got the lovely leopard Hosanna listening to what the elephants are saying as I can hear the elephant making some trumpet from very far. So it looks like the elephants are also making their way towards this direction where this cat is resting this afternoon. A very, very good afternoon and welcome to the beginning of the afternoon safari. My name is Sydney Pumulani Mikosi and I'm traveling with uh, Craig, who is my camera operator this afternoon. We are right live from the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Sabi Sands. For in case if you need our attention, you can follow us on Twitter, hashtag Tech Safari Live. You can also follow us on YouTube chat stream. We are here where Hosanna caught a, a, an impala yesterday. He is right there by the drainage. The impala is up by this tree. It's quite a distance between the tree and where he is. He, there is, is he now uh, slowly coming back. I can see that uh, he is now making his way back. He might climb the tree at any time. And not very far away from where I am, on the same area where this cat is coming from, I can see there is an impala here standing here and that cat is coming towards the impala. But uh, Hosanna is not aware about the presence of that impala. And he's at the distance of about now, I can say, uh, 100 meters away from the Impala. The Impala is not aware about him coming and he is also not aware about the presence of the Impala in front. So soon as they, 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 they see each other, we might see the Impala running away or Hosanna starting to get a Look at that. You can see that the Impala now saw the big cat coming. You can see the Impala might even give a warning call. Let's listen to the warning call. Listen to the warning call. This Impala is not afraid at all. The Impala is, is charging him now at a distance of about less than 50 meters. And he's not worried at all. You can hear the Impala charging. Now the Impala is going away. And it's, not, it's coming back again. The Impala is going away and it looks like it's coming back again to charge the uh, Hosanna. They're just looking at each other. Osana is being submissive here, and the Impala is going away and come back, away and come back. Now, Osana found another shade. He's not worried about the Impala anymore. 
a giraffe girl look at that impala coming back again so this impala doesn't want to go away she's keep coming back she's going away and she's coming back to charge him and none of the other animals are joining the impala on this warning calls so you can see that the impala is looking at the cat look at that she's coming closer again So this impala may be so worried about what happened to one of their head members yesterday when one of them got caught last night by the dam camp because it was a, a head. It was not alone when it was caught. Other ones ran away. Maybe this impala was part of those who ran away. Because when she came here, she was just looking. She was not eating. She was looking as if she's looking for Osana until she found him. Look at that. She's willing to approach Osana and she's trying to confront this dangerous cat. So you can see this impala is so very worried and this cat here, Osana, is not worried at all. It's just to him it's normal. Maybe she's not gonna come much closer because now I can see she's trying to come again. Francis, the possibilities are very high that that uh, might be the mother of the little one who has been caught, the lamb, this morning, or maybe the one who is already up by the tree is the mother. So I am not too sure which one is the mother, but this one was so worried and she was checking everywhere. Maybe this is the mother of that little one who was caught. That is why now she told herself, I want to confront that big cat. I, I, I'm, she's looking for answers, you can see. There she's going away now. She's just by herself looking for this cat. She was looking behind all these bushes until she saw him. She knew very well that he is somewhere here. So please don't get surprised. I am now going to be joined by the other vehicles by this leopard sighting. They might be clicking cameras and if you hear some voices, it will be uh, the guest from the other vehicles. So I can see now it's time for him to relax. He's slowly making his way back. I can see that he's just about a few meters away, less than 100 meters away from where the kill is hiding at the moment. And so now let's quickly cross over to the Masai Mara where Steve is just about to start now. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? My name is indeed Steve and I'm joined by Manu on camera and as you can see it is relatively fresh this afternoon. Apparently it's only 17 degrees Celsius and 63. I think it's a bit colder than that. We had another downpour of rain and hopefully it has stopped for now so we can go out and actually find the new animals. My mission for the afternoon is to see if we can find the elusive Owino bride that I haven't seen in some time. And there is a beautiful eagle. Got quite sort of tapered leggings. Now we've had this debate before about the leggings and the step eagle's leggings go all the way down to the feet. So it's possibly a lesser spotted eagle due to that. Let's see if we can get a good look at his eye. Her eye is quite dark, so it actually I'm thinking it is a lesser spotted eagle. They are more commonly around at the moment. I mean a, spe a step eagle, not a lesser spotted. Haven't seen a lesser spotted yet. But the step eagle, that seer, goes all the way to the eye and past. And you can see that it does just to the back of the eye. And a dark eye indeed, a tawny eagle has got more of a yellowish eye. And well, he's just, maybe he's... He's shortened his legs for today. Well, I'm sure this eagle is going to be loving it because the termites were already out this morning. We had some late 
the flying termites, also commonly known as flying ants, flying around last night after the rains. They taste just like peanut butter if you've ever tried one. They are quite delicious and they are eaten across the African continent as far as I'm aware, maybe other continents as well, by enormous amount of animals including vultures, jackal monkeys uh, and eagles alike. Our bat fox family, which uh, we did not find this morning, well they were certainly would thoroughly enjoy termites. It is one of their favorite food sources. Well as I said we're going to head off towards the south along the escarpment sort of road and see if we can come across the ever elusive Aweno Pride of Five and see what it is that they've been up to. Beautiful afternoon in the Mara nonetheless even though it is windy and a little bit cold the spirits are high and uh, well it's just lovely to be out. Lovely torchwood tree providing a sanctuary for the bird that can perch and also be able to just flop down on the ground when it sees its necessary food. Facing into the wind makes it easier for it to jump into the air and fly if need be. You'll often find birds facing the wind. It's quite a nice sort of wind sock sort of direction. Very good to use for wind sock direction. It is beautiful, thanks folks. It is really beautiful. Manu's doing all the work. So the birds will face into the wind so you can always get an idea of the direction of the wind and so it's coming from the mountains as you can see but as we move on in the search of the Aweno Pride David Gitu who probably is far ahead of me has already found himself some buffalo I moved on after my raptor and I'm sure all of you now got the answers to the big part of prey i asked you what you thought it was because james told me not to tell you who she was and i'm sure you all have your answers ready michelle that's very good to hear your name and uh, you're singing to was it a snake eagle i'll give you maybe six out of ten michelle just to say it was an ego that's very good but it was not exactly a snake and well tried we got some buffaloes here, and these are the African buffaloes, or what sometimes we call the Kip buffaloes. The last few months, we have had lots of and loads, thousands of wildebeest on their migration, and most of them have headed now south to Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. And now the buffaloes will be left enjoying every bit of grass here. Why are you looking at us like that? You've got grass in your mouth, you just need to chew it. Very fluffy ears she got, which is not unusual, but that's a lot of fur in the ear and on the neck. So keep trying about what ego I, I, got, I had, but first clue is it was an ego, like Michelle just said. It was a snake ego, that was good for Michelle to have said. Vicky, you're getting very close, Tepe Eagle, very, very close. And I'm going to give you the last clue. And the name of the ego starts with the letter T, T for Tango. And I'm sure from there, all of you should be able to get it. With the cool temperatures now, the buffaloes should be able to keep grazing. And then after some time, they're going to rest and start chewing cud. And you can see the massiveness of the savanna of the Mara Triangle. Huge expanse area. This is one of the differences between the Mara and Juma in South Africa. Juma is more wooded, thick vegetation, but here you tend to see very huge expanse areas of open grassland. Kelina, very good to hear your name and you say it was it a Tony Eagle and I say yes, 10 out of 10. Very well done, Kalina. It was a Tony Eagle. Thank you very much and I'm giving you a clap from all the way in the Mara Triangle. Very well done. It was a Tony Eagle. This buffalo got some mud at the tip of his horns and sometimes they will do that if they're having a little go on each other. 
All right, let's go back to Steve, who has a bad doing something interesting. Thanks, David. Sorry for pulling you back so quickly. We found this bird fly up into the tree. It's caught a bird. It seems like a bird. It's plucking it in the wind as we speak. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like a Dickinson's kestrel. I'm just going to double check. Um, a very white, I mean, yellow sear, yellow ring around the eye and the yellow legs. Um, there might be other kestrels up here that I don't really know about, but I am pretty sure it's a Dickinson's kestrel. A very uncommon bird down in South Africa. I've seen up in the northern Kruger in the Makuleki area. I just have to move up a bit. We're we good. Okay, and then the car will be able to get around us, will they? Yeah, I think they'll manage to get around us. Oh, it's flown off. Dickinson's kestrel, folks. Hello. They're wondering why we've stopped. They don't. It's a kestrel. Um, a lot of people who do lots of birding down in South Africa, they will have a sticker on the back of their car that says bird nerds so that everybody who stops behind them knows that in fact you're looking at a bird because uh, very likely, or very often, yeah indeed it is a Dickinson's kestrel. He's flying. I'll show you now. There it is. A very yellow, yellow ring around the eye, the yellow sear and the yellow legs. Beautiful, isn't it? I've seen, I think, six now in my life. That's a bit of a paler form. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful bird. And, well, that caught what looked like a dove or something small on the wing and then plucked it. Very, very cool. We saw a kill. How interesting, Bob. Dickinson's kestrel. I've seen them running around on the ground. Bob, I've also seen them running around. Please do look it up. Running around the ground chasing termites. I saw that in Malawi. That was very cool. The elegant bird went to suddenly looked like a very interesting, funny running around like a penguin, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> oh. Ladybird, I am so happy for you that you've got 102 now. Um, sorry, I'm just adjusting something there how beautiful is this this morning i mean this afternoon so i had a nap i'm feeling a little bit disorientated with the time of the day <laughs> gorgeous mara scenes well we're going to be heading down that way and see if we can pry some lions out of the landscape there are some elephants as they always are. so many of them around at the moment during the migration as going to areas where you don't really see too much of the migration well are we going to be able to achieve a big five afternoon for you we've got buffalo we've got elephant and well sydney is with hosanna just a few to go in order to complete the big five as steve has just indicated look now the little chief is the resting period of the day he is now sleeping and the stomach is looking big a little bit i saw that the carcass he caught they still have got some of the parts of the intestine maybe already enjoyed his stomach juice as usual can see he's so fast to respond we might have heard something this cone uh, cone shaped ears uh, can hear very well so the sun is very very hot at the moment here so that's why you can see that also his breathing rate is very much high so he was by the drainage now, he's still by the drainage, but uh, there's some of the trees which are much more greener and which can give him quite a very good shade. So you can see that these animals can easily blend with the surrounding. When he's uh, under the shade, uh, it's not very easy to see him. So we can see him because we saw him before. <laughs> uh, Paul, that is true, Paul. Uh, the leopards, they prefer the stomach juice. Also the lions, I've seen them doing that. So they do like the stomach juice. And you know, where I come from, when we uh, eat animals such as 
goats and sheep and and also cows. We also take the stomach juice out. So during the cooking, when we are just about to finish cooking, preparing, we have to just put some of the stomach ju juice back in order to uh, create a very nice uh, soup. And it tastes very nice. <laughs> so the stomach juice is not bad when it's cooked. Yeah, no, I have done that. I know when I'm cooking, I can be able to add this specific stage when you're cooking. When when you're about to finish, you can just take a cup or two of the stomach juice and then you have to put it there. <laughs> it's quite interesting and delicious. So if you taste something which is consisted of the stomach juice from a sheep, a cow and a goat, it's so nice. So every December during the Christmas and the New Year's is when we are eating quite a lot of stomach juices. <laughs> Um, and not long time ago I saw Tandy was badly injured and where she was injured you could see the flesh so I, you, I could see that there are no spots attached to the skin unless she was badly injured but I saw that the Tandy's injury showed me that the outer layer has got the spots and the inner layer does not have the spots unless I didn't see very well So those are very beautiful spots. Look at the tail, looks like a tiger snake. So there he's going again to sleep. I can hear some elephants in the area. What I'm going to do is I will leave Osana for a while, go and see if we can have uh, some elephants and what they are complaining about because they have been vocalizing for quite a lot now and come back here so that we can see him when going back to his kill. So now let's uh, quickly go back to uh, David by the Masai Mara, who is also having uh, the Masai Mara's elephants. Well, sometimes when the cuts, especially leopard, decide to be quiet, not doing much, but animals that will never bull us as guides out here in the bush are elephants. Because in general, elephants will always be doing something like that small little calf just walking the side of that one cow. I don't know where she's going. I don't know who is the mother. Yeah, that definitely must be the mother. Cows keep their babies very close to them. And the elephants in Juman, the elephants in the Mara Triangle, same species. But slight differences maybe in size or the morphology or how their bodies are shaped. I've always thought the elephants, the Mara Triangle, are more rounded and the ones in Juma in South Africa maybe a little bit angular. Slightly bigger in size. I don't know what Sidon might think. Hopefully going to be seeing some elephants today and we can compare notes. This is a herd of Ellis and always led by one female that we call the matriarch. The social structure here will have the oldest female being in charge of the herd. Remember, we're very interactive. Your questions give us a lot of joy or comments on Twitter. You can use hashtag Safari Live. It's a very small baby there. And in general, elephants will keep the babies right in the middle of the group, not wanting to take any chances. Ch 
that's a, that's a very interesting question. Why do elephants have tails and definitely not for balance? You're right. I mean, uh, I doubt a tail would be of any good use to an elephant. Jason, honestly, I do not know. And the only reason I would give is maybe to keep uh, flicking it for flies or for communication, you know? I have seen elephants when they're comfortable, quiet, and in the best spirit. They'll always swing or, you know, flick their tails from one side to the other. Jason, the only thing I would say is for communication and not for anything else. Maybe I'll request M in the final control to ask the same question from Jason to Sydney and Steve. Why elephants, you know, have tails and not for balance? The animals that have known comfortably using tails are cheetahs because they use them as rudder when they run and they need to turn. The tails come in very handy. I've seen elephants without tails still surviving and it doesn't affect them very much. Lions, either with missing tail or have, having half tails. But I've never seen a cheetah with a half tail or with a missing tail. Either cheetahs know how important the tails are. And I'm happy, like most of you agree, maybe to keep the flies out. Or the trees you see in the background there, we call the tortured trees or the Balanitis egyptiaca, very iconic trees of the Mara Triangle and the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. One advantage elephants have, they are like mixed feeders in the sense that they can eat grass and plants. Sorry, can me the question again of Orion? Oren, good question. Do you have areas in the Mara where we have wind erosion? I do not think so. The Mara that have different habitats and is covered by all different types of vegetation. At the moment, I think Oren can see how the grass is being blown by the wind and we have not suffered any wind erosion. In Kenya, there's a park called Amboseli National Park that's southeast of Kenya. And that area, they have suffered a lot of wind erosion because it's very bare and almost most parts with no vegetation. And when they've got very strong wind, they lose lots of topsoil to the wind. But the Mara, as you can see, we have the grass that will hold the erosion. And should there be any erosion in this area, it will be out safe from the water when you have very heavy rains, but still not as much. We got very good vegetation cover in the Mara Triangle. That one, they got very huge. And being big doesn't mean she is in charge of the group. The matriarch of the leader is always the oldest. She could be small in size, but high experience makes the whole difference. Well, we'll take you back to Sydney in South Africa and find out what his cat is doing. So those elephants, we have just heard the noise. Oh, here they are. So now we're just following the scent because we could smell them. The wind is on our favor, but it was difficult to see them. But now I can see they are right there. So we're just gonna uh, get much closer so that we can have a good sighting. So the elephant body has got a very strong scent. So it's very easy to pick it up. When they're in the bushes passing by, you will smell it. It smells like the, some of the trees, some of the uh, small trees such as the khaki balls. The body smells like a khaki balls exactly. So these elephants, they are so very lucky because the area they have selected now has got some of the bush recovering. 
So I'm sure that is why they are here uh, by this area. They must come and eat here. Look at that elephant has just pushed down a recovering tree. Look at that. So that elephant has just pushed down uh, the tree which is recovering at the moment. So the elephants by this time of the year can be destructive because uh, it's when they are following the nutrients under the ground. This is quite a small head. There's quite a lot of them also in front there. So you can see there's quite a lot of roots there which are there to support that tree when it's windy. Now he's eating the roots. He might leave that tree like that, which means the tree is not going to die. The tree is still going to carry on surviving. But what's going to happen is that when the elephant push it, pushes a tree and it falls like this, the, the tree must have to now rearrange the branches. The branches are now facing only the western side, which means the leaves can only access the afternoon, late afternoon sun. And the late afternoon sun is not going to help them a lot. They need sun from the eastern side, sunrise in the morning, and late afternoon, and also during the day, so that they can be able to make food through photosynthesis. If we come here after some time, you will see the branches changing, starting to face up. So that tree is going to feel that now my leaves are facing west. I must rearrange the, 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 the branches and start growing up so that I can catch the sun. You will see that's what's going to happen there. The tree is disturbed at the moment. It will again rearrange the processes. Josh, that is quite a very interesting question. The elephants, they are born after 22 months of pregnancy. And after three, three years is when they are nest, when they get to three to four years, uh, they become independent for feeding. 16 years is when the bulls get chased away from the group. When they are walking as a head, when they get 16 years, it's independence. They must have to leave the group and join the others. Elephants reach maturity when they're above 12, 12, 12 and a half years. So it's not very far away from us, which used to be 18 years. We know it's when some of us are starting to become independent. So elephants, 16 years, independence starts. Look at that. So you can see this elephant is using the left, left task. We have got the master task as well as the slave task. So here, some of the elephants are left-handed and some, they are right-handed. The task which is used the most, mostly it gets thinner and it breaks a lot. Say my name. The elephants, the, their stomachs are so very much adaptable when it comes to the things such as the tenning. If you check, the elephants, they don't really concentrate on the leaves by the trees. They do eat leaves, twigs, and they've got roots. So they've always got a chance to dilute the amount of tannin from other parts of the plant because most of the tannin is taken straight through to the leaves. So the animals such as the browsers, small browsers, specifically ruminants, because remember, the problem with the ruminants is that they're going to come and eat and they will eat and have the stuff the food saved in the stomach and when the food is saved in the stomach it has to be taken out and for feeding purposes afterwards so it means if they are eating food with tannin the tannin is going to stay in the leaves as well in the body that is why sometimes they get constipated and they, they the tannin binds the intestine in the stomach because the leaves they eat it stays much longer in the stomach here by the elephants elephants are hind gut fermenters which means digestive system on the elephants it starts from the mouth as they're chewing when they're chewing and salivating on what they're eating they are already starting to dilute the amount of tannin from these kind of trees
MVH, I have been uh, on a sighting where the two elephants, these elephants knew that they were lions under one of the thick bushes. And I was in Tawe, I was having an elephant sighting, enjoying like this. Suddenly, this one elephant pushed a tree over the thick bush and the lions came out running. And from there, problems started. Lions started charging back to the elephants. Elephant was trumpeting, chasing them. But unfortunately, the two lions cannot do anything to this gigantic animal. <laughs> the good news, uh, let me tell you something uh, from your comment, saying now he's having a salad. If you look at that bush now, that tree is, pu is uh, uh, which is pushed over there, the leaves are starting to get green. Where he's eating now is where there is quite a lot of nutrients available. If he can go and eat small twigs and leaves on top, he's not going to have nutrients there. So what we are seeing now is a very nutritious diet. Nutritious diet by this time of the year is on the roots. That's why they pushed over a lot of trees now, because the trees are hiding the roots. does serve a lot as a storage organ by this time of the year. So now let me uh, take you back to the Masai Mara where David is so very, very cold at the moment. Yes, I'm very cold and I can tell you for a fact now I got four layers. One, two, three and four. Four layers. And it's very interesting how, as a human being, I can get that cold. And we got zebras here to the left, which are not cold at all. I mean, I'm trying to look at some zebras on the left here, and they're just minding their business. Sorry about that's my zip. I'm trying to remove my hood from my head so that I don't keep hearing myself. And these zebras don't feel or don't look affected by the cold me and James are experiencing. Well, that's how it is out in the bush, and uh, Mother Nature will design animals in a particular way, and because of their skins, they can handle the cold comfortably. The zebras and myself and James, we are all mammals, but as human beings, maybe you have not been able to adopt. Are you greeting each other? Are you saying hello to each other? Well, they just met there. What are you doing there? Hyenas will have that creepy way of greeting, uh, at the genitalia of, if it's, for example, is it's a subordinate, you know, male, female, they tend to greet each other that way. But that is such a nice setting. Social bonding, maybe? Or you just may play for together? And these are the common zebras or the barchals. And they could be boys, maybe, trying each other out. That's great sighting. Um, enjoys that sighting. She says, uh, lovely. And I had a question from Jason. Why do or should elephants have tails? Zebras are definitely, I would think they should have the tails. They suffer more of flies than elephants, I would guess. But I would want to know what would happen with a buffalo or rather with a zebra without a tail. And buffalo is the same. And talking of how I'm um, experiencing the cold, even the buffaloes seem to be fine with the very low temperatures that we got at the moment. Yes, I agree. They would look very silly without the tails. And yeah, I mean, I don't know how they would look like. Maybe tail completely. There are some animals we have been seeing without tails around here. And I'm talking of lions and elephants. But yeah, try, try to, to figure it out, an animal without a tail. And more animals we have been used to seeing with tails and having zero tails or half tails. A zebra would look very weird. I've seen a few which have thought either lions have tried to bring them down and they survived. But even the stump that remains 
on the back. They keep, you know, tweeting it and moving it left to right. Hello, Zebra. Same family with the horses, Equidae. This species, you'll see it most parts of Africa. But in Kenya, we have this, the Bachels. And if you go to Kenya, you'll see a different species called the Gravy Zebra. Version of all the animals I know that good in adapting in whatever you know feeding condition they are in. Now there was a time I would guess ten years ago when there was a very huge drought, Rosalind, in East Africa, and very many animals died. I'll tell you, a very small population of zebras died. They'll eat a lot of bulk grass, very very dry and they got very good digestive system because zebras are non-ruminants and I think that one gives them an advantage over for example the buffalo that you see there the wildebeest so most of the ruminant animals died in that drought but zebras will always look bloated whether pregnant or not with big tummies because they can easily adapt to very dry grass and still survive Well, my plans today is to go to look for the sausages. I had them this morning, and sausages are a pride of lions, not very far from where I am. But I think Steve might be having something similar. Well, we have got a very dead buffalo, folks, and it's not for sensitive viewers. It is very dead. It's been eaten almost completely, and we have found the remnants of the Olololo pride from yesterday. Yesterday, we only had a number, a few of the members. David had five, and we had two, and we found the two youngsters are here with this pride, and we haven't counted them all in their entirety. There are three behind me, two here and then about four or so over there on the thickets, which probably make up the remainder of what was missing yesterday. But look at the belly of that male on the right. Incredible. So look at the buffalo neck. Behind the neck is a belly that could not get any more food in it. And it looks like a female buffalo by the fact that there's no boss on the front. And uh, well, she was in pretty good condition. Not good enough though against a very successful and strong pride of lions and you see they've eaten the ribs there's almost nothing left there's another young male hasn't eaten quite as much as his brother but you can probably feel in here the wind is absolutely pumping <laughs> everyone yeah, it's just a flesh wound you say yeah, well this buffalo will probably shake it off in a minute and walk away and this is what happens out here, folks. I know we spent some time this morning, or Lauren did, with Hosanna playing with his food. And it is a very sad process. You know, nature is a cruel beast. And you'll find quite often things happening. And this would have been quite an epic sighting to witness these lions pulling down this buffalo. And it wouldn't have been fun for the buffalo. It wouldn't have been a pleasant sight. There would have been a lot of noise. They probably would have started on the bum and on the tail and brought her down to avoid the horns and uh, she would have died probably quite a slow death. It is very sad, but it is the nature of the beast out here. The buffalo also has the opportunity to injure and kill the lion if she wants to, or if she tries too hard enough. And every now and again, buffaloes will actually come back and help their family. Yes, indeed, it is lion's thanksgiving out in the African wilderness, and the Olololos have had theirs early in the morning. And Happy Thanksgiving to all of you out there. I hope you are having a wonderful time if you are celebrating Thanksgiving today. Hopefully you are not celebrating with a buffalo because there's nothing left. Just maybe some bones for a stew. A little bit of buffalo neck perhaps. But you can see nothing gets wasted. And they will still feed some more. The vultures will come in and then after that the hyena will dispatch what is left of this carcass. And you can see on the left hand side on the ground there is the rumen content, all of the grass from the, the tummy that has come out, so a little bit of compost for the ground, a little bit of iron as well, 
for the soil so a little bit of a nutrient hot spot as you will and anyway there we go we have found some lines to add number four to the list of big five with a buffalo on tow anyway Sydney is with another big five animal he has found his elephants and I think they are being quite cheeky You can see that uh, the elephant of goat is just moving the tail all the time. Look at that. So that tail has got quite a lot of hair. And that is the only part by the elephant which is very hairy. Which makes this elephant to be part of the mammals. It's one of the characteristics of the elephant to be part of the mammals. They've got uh, hairs. They've got a uh, four-chambered heart. And these animals they have got a well-developed brain and they are endothermic which means they can be able to regulate their own body temperature so the tail has got several purposes they use that tail as a fly swatter and they also use the tail in order to help their little ones when they're walking long distances and when crossing by the dams little ones hold the adults by the tail you can see that uh, the tail is doing uh, it's work all the time. So those kind of areas where the tail is hanging to the males, sometimes when the males are on mast, they do urinate over their back legs. And that urine does not smell nice. And then sometimes the tail must have to be waving all the time to chase away the flies. So you can see this elephant is so very much interested on feeding on this kind of uh, roots from this tree. It's even following the roots that are living from the stem uh, to the distance. Uh, Shannon, I heard a lot that some of the people can be able to determine the age of an elephant by looking at the tusks, but to me it is still very difficult to exercise. So you see now he's going to also dig there with his front foot. Look at that. This is how they dig. So it means he's going to dig to take out the sand so that he can easily access and follow those roots. Look, now he's digging there. You can see he's taking off the sand. Uh, Fuma, that is true. Elephants, there is no wasted time. Elephants, they are so busy all the time. And they can spend 18 to 20 hours just feeding. Look at that, he's digging now. The very same way this elephant is digging is how they dig when they're looking for water underground. These animals can be able to smell water at a distance of 20 kilometers away. Underground, more than two meters, they can smell water. They can even dig pipes. Elephants can smell water and dig some of the pipes underground. At one stage some years ago, I have witnessed one of the interesting sightings. Here, it was raining and one of the big elephants got stuck. And this elephant was just walking by himself. He got stuck there for about hours and hours. And the whole head came back in order to assist him. They came and pushed him. He was stuck and already he was starting to develop the, a big, big donga. And that area there was so soft because he has been battling by himself. The other elephants came and they were pushing him out. And they managed to, to unstuck him. That was so very interesting. They were trying to winch him with the trunk to pull him and to push him, but suddenly they managed to take him out. <laughs> so elephants, they do care for each other a lot. So 
So it's good that this elephant is eating these roots here because sometimes they just push over a tree and eat one piece and move on. So the chances of the survival of that tree, they are very much high because he won't be able to access the other roots which are on the other side underneath. He will only eat this exposed one from one side. Donald, the elephants don't have a specific time in order to sleep. Sometimes you can be lucky and see them sleeping during the day. Sometimes they sleep during the night. Some of them, they even sleep while standing. So sometimes it can be very difficult to tell as to whether these elephants slept during the day or not because they can be able to sleep while standing as well. So now let's uh, cross over to the Masai Mara where Steve is still having the sleepy lion. Thanks Sydney. Just repositioning here real quick to try and get these other lions in the picture and see how full you're happy there. See if we can uh, get a two shot of these three. I thought this one that's very pale, the one sort of with its paw on the other one, was the youngster from yesterday, but I'm mistaken. That's actually a young male. So I'm not 100% sure the two we spent the drive with last night, if they are indeed with this mishmash of lions. They're probably more on the other side, closer to the marsh. But we are relatively far from where all of the Lord spent most of the time. This is an area I've spent a lot of time with the Awino Pride. So when we heard that there was lions just up the way, we got very excited. Um, Easy. It's actually interesting because do you reckon there could be a co adjoining here, Manu? Because I don't remember a, an Olololo male being pale like that. There is a pale Owino ma member. There is a pale Owino member, and he has got an injury on his hip, on the inside of his of his left hip, which is there. That is it. So this is very likely members of the Wino Pride that have actually been in confrontation with the Olololos because there's two big, should I say, big two young males on the buffalo kill there itself. It's a very good chance that they have dominated these three lions that we have over here, which could very be, very likely be the Wino Pride. We'll have to have a look at some colors and see if in fact that is an injury on the inside of the hip, but it does look like it to me, doesn't it? And he was a pale young male. father to um, the pale ones in the Olololo pride, but I've only seen young females. Yes, that's most certainly him. So we have got the Awino pride, folks. It does look like we have got members of the Awino pride. I once found, because um, I, I, I know I've spoken to you all about a pride I spend a lot of time with down south, and I once found six members of a of the mountain pride of the young males on a uh, giraffe it was and i got there and there were the, there were eight lions actually so i thought okay cool i've got all eight of the boys but they were sitting at looking at each other they had six males on one side and two males on the other. There's something about the behavior that wasn't 100 percent relaxed to me and then all of a sudden the six males got up and chased the other two and the other two actually were nomads from the south but they'd been sharing the carcass for a long time and eventually the, they just decided to chase each other off and it was really interesting all six one and gave him a bit of a hiding but it wasn't too bad um, but you'll often find lions doing this and you don't really know what's going on until you actually see the behavior they'll often lie very close to each other close to the same kill without showing any sort of real negative response to each other until maybe something all of a sudden snaps exactly Jay. that is what I'm thinking at the moment but I'm just going to try and get another look at these other two lioness that are lying here. Uh, I can't quite make them out right now, but they look quite young by the 
a spot pattern on her hip there, but she she's a beautiful lioness. But it, it could actually be the Olololos have come and either assisted or taken over the kill that the Awinos have managed to do. Puma, I love the Awinos. area we found them in many times and uh, well that young male is actually the to me the go-giver of it and they are the underdogs they are a breakaway of the sausage tree pride which David is on his way to go and see and what interaction relations they have with the Olololas is hard to say but they share a boundary um, they obviously have interacted many a time the Olololas being a much bigger pride um, well, with lots of youngsters invariably five lioness versus two lionesses far stronger coalition of females not that females form coalitions but the pride in general we know this will often just move away from conflict which is probably what they've done here but they don't look very full do they Manu not as full as the male at the back there possibly eaten it's hard to really say but interesting time will tell whether it is in fact the Awinos. The Awinos are a two adult females. She, the one female is quite pale in colour. Her name is Lichi and then her sister is Butternut. Okay, okay. While we try to figure out who these flat cats full of buffalo are, let's go back down to Sydney. I am still here now uh, trying to approach the small head of these elephants who are now looking very much stationary. Uh, they are feeding and some of the big ones are now crossing the road going towards the drainage lines. And I would like to apologize for the inconveniences, uh, the breakups by the Masai Mara. But we are still live from the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park, Sabi Sands. So look at the little ones crossing. So one of them big ones crossed already, and maybe hopefully the matriarch is the one who crossed earlier on. Look at that little one. So the elephants, they can climb high elevations, but coming down is not an easy exercise. I have seen an elephant which broke his leg when coming to and trying to come down from a little mountain, especially if it's too rocky. When they slip, because of the weight of the big body size, they break their front legs. Yeah, uh, that little one has just gone now uh, to the bushes there. I'm just going to uh, pull forward a little bit so that we can have a good sighting because they are now uh, crossing, going down towards uh, this uh, drainage line. They are following the guari bushes there. As the guaris are still very green, uh, they are part of those evergreen trees. So let's see, another little one is coming. I can see the maybe we might have a good sighting of this a second little one who might come past at any time so the little one is trying to also get something uh, from the ground MDR, these are very healthy baby elephants. So the vegetation it means to them is so very nutritious. And the grass they're eating also is giving them quite a lot of uh, vitamins because the grasses, they play a very significant role. The grasses has got uh, this, what is called the vitamin B, which is responsible for growth. Vitamin B is the one which is also called a folic acid. The one which gives us as well the red blood cells is the one which is responsible for growth too by these animals. Look at that big elephant uh, coming to cross here. Yeah. 
So let's just see what this elephant is thinking about. You know, the elephants, all they want is a respect. See, they didn't do anything, and the elephant looked at me, and now it's leaving. So, but mostly, look at the babies coming as well. Look at that, look at that. So the babies is the ones that normally they prefer to come closer. Sometimes they like to trumpet, just to try to show off. They try to showcase <laughs> their level of testosterone. So this little one is so very much shy. You can see it's now uh, following very quickly uh, the mother in front. So I'm just going to uh, drive and carry on here and see if we can be lucky with anything here. And slowly I'll be making my way back to the little chief so that we can see what is it the little chief is thinking about to do with the remaining food he caught last night. So let's see. Let's hit the road now. Safari Sally, I haven't experienced the elephants reacting or retaliating to the bees, but I have seen the elephants retaliating to the ants. <laughs> you know, the ants is the ones who discourages the elephants from eating some of these trees. Where there's too much ants, elephants don't go there because they know that the ants, they can bite and they can be able to go through their nose in the form of a trunk and go in there. So the trees sometimes employs the ants for protection. Imagine a security guard in the form of an ant to chase away the big ant elephant, to chase away this big body animal. So you can see that size doesn't matter here. So I'm just trying to check around the the garlic cut line just to see if we we can be lucky, maybe with the tracks of Tingana, as he was also seen in the area last night. And then we will head back to the little chief. So now we are going back to the Masai Mara where Stevie is with his lion, not lions, lions, they sleep too much. Thanks, it is terribly sorry about our communication technical issues, folks. We are sorting it out, but we have moved over to, well, where there were some other lions lying up and there are two other males. So now we've got four of the sort of older young males in the uh, Olololo Pride that are on the scene. These two are quite far away from the rest of the other two males that are over there on the buffalo as well. And then I am pretty sure that these four males probably outcompeted those three Owino Pride individuals, pushing them off the kill and feeding at it, feeding on it. Probably was yesterday at least maybe the three Owinos actually killed this buffalo cow and these four notorious young males have moved into the area to steal it. So these are the beginnings of a sort of nomadic life. The, the lionesses of their own pride are starting to leave them alone and range further distances and they started to move and steal the food from others. Kimberly, what a lovely face indeed. It's very, very pretty. He wants to go over there to his brothers, I'm thinking it's his brothers. It is exceptionally difficult to develop ID kits for young males because as they grow, their mane gets bigger and they get more and more scars and wounds on their face. That young Owino pride male is a lot easier because he's pale and he's got a very bad injury on his left hip. So that makes it quite easy. But for these guys, it's tricky. It's tricky, very, very tricky. Each day you see them, there'll be a new scratch on the face. Reuben, you don't know the, the strongest coalition of lions. Well, 
The strongest I've seen is five males. Five males, and that is just insurmountable, really. I've never seen anything bigger than that. I did spend time with the pride of young males that ended up being eight of them, but I never actually saw them become a coalition pride, a pride coalition. Um, I left before that happened, but they were within a pride, and, well, it was very hard for any males moving in to push them out due to the fact that, well, eight young boys is very hard to push away. They eat a lot. But there are nine young males in the Olololo pride, four of them being here that we can assume at the moment. And they've come, probably smelt it. The wind was coming from this direction. Probably smelt the fresh buffalo carcass on the wind. And they came in and competed with the Awinos. I would love to have had to be a fly on the wall during that period. If we'd been here, it would have been marvelous to have documented because it's in the open. Really, really beautiful scenes out here. If you are in place, you would have we would have been able to view it. Not like Juma that is so densely wooded. We always seem to miss the takedown because it's always behind a tree out here. I mean, look how far you can see the elephants all the way back there to these young male lions. Bright night, I'm pretty sure it's survival. I saw him over a month ago. He was limping a bit and um, the wound, I mean, it's just the problem was is in that sort of hip skin part, you know, that you're constantly moving. So every time he walks, The, the, the leg sort of joins the body there. That is where the injury was. It was a bit of a tear in the skin. Um, he's survived. He looks pretty good. Uh, we're not talking about this lion, that is. He's over there. We'll go and have a look. And I've no doubt it's healed. Lions have an incredible ability to heal themselves. They are the two fattest of the boys. And then off to the left are the three tucked up awinos. There we go. Heads are up. Who knows, maybe we will see some action. Maybe we will see them compete with each other. That would be quite something to see. But no doubt the Awinas will give way to these younger, stronger boys. Just not worth the risk. So we're gonna go back over there, shall we, Manu? Who knows, it could be more lions popping out anywhere. We're pretty sure that this young male on our right, he is quite keen to go back there and Oh, it's down again. Sorry about that. They are well and truly fed. Might have drawn a two shot again. If we can, we're going to try and do a two shot with these lions lying down on the buffalo and get the wieners on the background, but we might not be able to see over the animal's tummy. <laughs> He's got a huge tummy on him. We might get a, a bit of a two shot of a vehicle here. There we go. Let's just get it to position there. Per oopsie. Perfect, says Manu. There we go. Okay. So the behavior of the lions at the back, you can see their posture. They're looking the other way. It's kind of that sort of behavior that lions do because lions look at each other. There's all about body language. And uh, if they were interested in coming towards the kill, they would come but they turn their head, they look the other way, they know they want to come here, but the conflict is, is probably around, and so they're just pretending that it's not happening. Just look the other way, okay? That whole term we use, just look the other way, is kind of sort of synonymous with lion behavior. If they're not looking, they're apparently not interested, and it's always kind of that sort of, one of those body language things that they do. Obviously, if a lion looks at a lion, that is how they behave. Eye contact is quite important for them. So to avoid any conflict, they'll just look the other way and pretend that there aren't two fat males here and have stolen their prize. I am assuming though, folks, we weren't here, we didn't see any of it, but that is most likely the what happened. Most likely. But if the two other We Know Pride members joined, maybe there would be some interest. But just with one young male, very, very tricky. Okay, well, the wind is blowing and the lion's bellies are full.
all. I don't think they're going anywhere just yet, but they might get up and do something shortly. But while we wait, let's go back down to Sydney, who's scouting the watering holes. So the wind is developing, it's getting strong here where I am around the Buffalo's Hook Dam. This is the dry Buffalo's Hook Dam. It used to be one of those dams with high water holding capacity. So, but now you can see that the water which was here last week is dry and animals came for the mud wallowing and the mud is also getting dry. When the sun is hot every day, there is quite a lot of evaporation processes taking all the water up by the surface and also through a process of transpiration, which is a loss of water through the leaves, trees are also losing quite a lot of uh, water when the wind is blowing and suddenly the water comes back in the form of uh, precipitation through a very interesting long process called the hydrological cycle. It's also called the water cycle. So it's just about water leaving the earth's surface to the air through evaporation process and up by the surface is going to condense and after con condensation precipitation is going to come down as the temperature is going to drop up to one degree by the intertropical convergence zone where it's going to be converted into the rain and that's how we are getting rain. Yeah, there is no water on the surface at the moment, but there is too much water now by the sky. I can see the clouds trying to build up. We might get the same water again. You mustn't forget that the water that we are drinking now and the water that we have been seeing by the Buffalo Hook Dam is not a new water. And always it's an old water which is just being recycled through this water cycle. The water we are drinking today is the water which has been drunk by the same dinosaurs. So this water is very old. It's even five million years older than the sun. The sun is not as old as the water we are drinking today. So that water is not there by the dam, but <clears throat> it is somewhere else and it's going to come back. Becky, we did not get a lot of uh, rain last night. It was just a little bit of shower. The interesting part is the little bit of shower we had last night might not be enough for us because we can only see the markings of the droplets. But the trees benefited a lot from that little bit of water. A half of bread is better than nothing. Yes, when it comes to the dams, they don't have water at the moment, but at least if the trees are absorbing a little bit in order to maintain the health status of the animals, it's fine. Shortly, we will get the heavy rains. It's good that the trees are taking some other steps forward, which will then assist the animals to develop a good health condition. So the problem is, if you don't have water by the dams and the trees don't have nutrients, then it's a drought. And when there's a drought, what happens? Animals lose body conditions and they just die out. But at least here, vegetation is, 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 uh, is coming back and this is promising. Very difficult to find the tracks. Chick chick, the most rainy month here is the December month. From December, January, 
in most parts of this country, South Africa, is when it's raining. And mostly we do um, end the rainy season by the end of May. From the mid-May towards the end of May is when we are getting the last rains. But normally we used to uh, get the last rains by the end of March, April. But now it's extending to May where I used to work in Marrakech, the national park, which is under the South African national parks in Nimpopo, the rain by the end of May is when we are having the last round of rain. It is so dry and I can promise you uh, by the rural areas, like I come from the deep rural areas, is when people are now starting, starting to take it serious and a lot of rituals has to be performed by quite a lot of different tribes in the country and you will see sometimes all the different tribes together going out in order to perform the rituals to call the rain to come and this involves the rain queen. In the country we do have a rain queen who is leading the rain ritual process processes. So we've got to believe where I come from that a pangolin, if a pangolin is dead, it means we won't get rain there. We will suffer from the drought. So in Venda, you're not allowed uh, to kill a pangolin. You're not even allowed to drive over a pangolin. Because if, if that happens, then it means we are not going to have rain. It's a traditional belief associated with the pangolin. Pangolin, we believe, is the one who is bringing us rain or who is contributing towards the rain. I saw something here, I want to show you now here. It's on the ground. I'll just get off the car and pick it up. It's quite a few here. <clears throat> So you can see I've got these here now, <clears throat> sorry, these are the fruits from one of the popular trees, look at that. So this is from the Amarulas, so you can see now that the Marulas are growing and end of December, January, we are going to have quite a lot of uh, Amarula beer and the elephants are going to be very excited, but by this time, when I'm trying to press here, I can only feel the seed because uh, the flesh is still attached uh, to the seed. As time goes on, this kind of fruit is going to absorb quite a lot of water. And that water, when you press, you are going to feel it. But now it's dry because this is still during the development process. This is the Amarula fruit when it's still young. And when it's ready, when they are ripe, you will see the color change and turn into yellow. And it, it attracts also quite a lot of worms. You will see the, the worms in there. So when Marula beer is, is made, it's made from this fruit. This is what we go out for collection purposes. And Apart from eating just the marula, you can also eat the seed, you can also make the oil from the seed, you can also use the seed uh, as, 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 a, um, a sun, uh, as, as a sun cream. So there's quite a lot of things you can use from this. So it's a skin care oil, you can also make that. So the squirrels, they like to take the seeds of the marulas.
So squirrels, they like to take the seeds of the amarulas a lot. And they help when it comes to the distribution of seeds because they take the amarulas and they hide these seeds under the ground. When the seeds are hidden under the ground, not all the seeds are going to be recovered when the squirrel is going to eat. And those seeds are the seeds that suddenly grows where they are hiding. So the squirrel will take it there and he's going to then take them out and they put a scent where they hide them so that they can be able to sniff where they were. They also put some theft, anti-theft anti systems where they put them under the ground and they move them every time. So you'll see, they will put them here for a while and then there is part of just the theft because they know the rats can come and take them. So now let's uh, cross over back to Steve in the Maasai Mara. Welcome back. The zebra are moving very, very close towards the waiting Wino Pride. I mean, one of the individuals has risen their head up very windy. The zebra seems to be a little bit spooked. Definitely the scent of lion on the air and dead buffalo no doubt. We've got some youngsters. They were running not so long ago. Just want to scan around see if there are more lions somewhere around. You never know there are always lions hidden in the long grass. Life of a zebra must be quite tough. For now they're just out of range. This one lioness summing up the energy costs required to move 80 or so meters. Obviously if the zebra had chosen a different route, the lions would have just gone flat. None of the other lions have even risen their head. No energy costs to be weighed up if you're full. Thinking about it, it seems to be an adult now, that one, doesn't it, Manu? The muscle development on the back, the head, the neck, I'm going to assume that that's butternut. Bright night, lions do have contracted white muscle disease. Um, it's not something I'm too familiar with. I know that the, the oh, um, what's it, the Unkuhuma pride down in Druma experienced that. Uh, some of their cubs died of white and muscle disease. Oh, two of them have got their heads up now. A very, very really the animals basically everything in their body in a way atrophied and they just couldn't move they just were paralyzed so I suppose atrophy is not the right word but they were completely paralyzed and helpless the parents couldn't move them around but I, I suppose it's one of those diseases that afflicts a, a population uh, in certain times and afflicts the, the weak and uh, one of the cubs survived it only to later on succumb to all sorts of other ills and and woes in the African wilds. We're not sure what happened to that youngster, but it never really did look very well, even after surviving the white muscle disease. It always looked very skinny and very thin and didn't really ever regain any strength. Um, but up here in the Mara, I haven't experienced or heard too much about any disease. Diseases often uh, will plague animals when they're weak and will affect them quite badly if they're weak and pluck out the weak from the population. Whereas uh, most of these animals are quite fit, quite strong. I know James was talking about it on Safari Lives on Monday about in Ghana, about the ills he's had. And a lot of these animals are very, very strong. And a lot of what happens out in these areas uh, will affect the lion to a degree. Uh, but they're often able to shake it off like we do with a common cold. Uh, we just shake it off. We boost our immune system. It's the perpetual sort of evolutionary race out here, where the weak are always plucked out. And for an animal to survive the first year or so, first six months to a year, they generally generally make it from a from a survival point of view when it comes to disease. But earlier than that, if they are not strong enough to 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 get past that stage, the disease quite often can grab them and 
pull them down and white muscle disease sadly is is one of those and I missed all of that stuff with them Kuhumas I know Jamie was around and James and Brent and very very sad to see an animal go like that very very sad indeed but uh, well the zebra are not far off these two lioness might might think about it the wind is in their favor the grass is quite short this area was was quite tall not long ago and the wildebeest have been through Zebra seemingly calming down now that they've moved away from the escarpment. Maybe there are whole lions hidden over there that we can't see. But uh, talking about lions, I wonder how David's getting on in his search for the sausages. Well, I am doing very good. I'm doing very well. The only challenge is I am under some storm and all the flaps are down and I have put on an extra layer on top just to make sure I do not get cold. But the good news are I have reached or I have landed in the Sausage Republic. Now the only job I have now is to get them where they are. So this is good news. So all flaps down and the Mara Triangle is huge. And where Steve is, I do not know that he has any rain. I highly doubt Steve has any rain. But where I am, I got some either cats and dogs or elephants and buffaloes. But again, as I said, I have gotten to the territory for the sausages. And I had seen them early in the morning. I need to know now, are they in the same place or have they moved to a different location? I was with Bungay in the morning as the camera operator. This evening I am with James, and James is so hopeful that we are going to see them. Is that correct, James? James says, mm. And that reminds me of the wildebeest. When you hear the wildebeest, that uh, he really has to say the Republic. And yes, because when you say the Republic, the sausages own this area and we rarely see any other pride in this area. And when you become a Republic, you tend to own a particular spot. So I want to get a spot where I can cross over to the side I saw them. And I think officially I'll be asking my colleagues whether we can name this area the Sausage Republic. So we're gonna turn here gonna put low ratio just to make sure I have all the full tires going up for that oh Mila did very well I always respect this particular car and I want to show you what I have as my wipers this is what I used to just clean my windscreen so that uh, I am able to see where I am going because now I am off the road in a Land Rover and a Land Rover is very good when you're doing off-roading and that's what I use just to clean the windscreen. So now the sausage is where are you as I'm just crossing my fingers and trying also to clean my eyes will take you back to Sydney in South Africa. So now we are here, apologies for that, we are now heading, so we are now heading much more towards the hyena den, just to go and see if we can see the hyenas before we come back to the little chief, Wasana, who is very much static and the sighting is guaranteed as he just got something last night. The wind is too much here this afternoon. Aiden, the animals, if they don't get enough water, they are going to die. Water is a very, very important thing to have because if you don't have water, you are going to struggle. It acts as a transport agent and water also 
act as a lubricant in the body. So if you don't drink water after eating strong hard material like these animals, and I'm talking about dry grass, at the moment most of them has been feeding on dry grass, they are going to have problems. So water is an essential requirement for the body. Animals here in Juma, I'm trying to think about an animal which does not really depend on water. Yes, I want to take off the predators because the predators obviously they do get water from what they catch and it's not really necessary for them to go to the water holes every time because they get water from the liver and from the blood and the stomach juice as well. So they can be able to drink water that has been drunk by an animal before they catch. So now we, we, we have got the animals who feed on grass. The animals who are feeding on grass and animals who are feeding on leaves here in Juma this is uh, not scientifically proven. I just want to tell you from my own understanding. Animals such as the giraffes, they can be able to go for about uh, two weeks without drinking water. They can just urinate a very sticky urine to keep the moisture as much as possible in their bodies. So those are some of the animals which can survive much longer because the leaves they are feeding on are also, they, they've got quite a lot of uh, nutrient vigo. The moisture in it is a lot and that helps them to go for long distances without water. Animals such as Hemsbok, like where I used to work, Hemsbok is a desert animal, but those are the ones which can go much longer than the other ones because they are So now let's go back to Steve with the lions. Thank you guys, welcome back. We've just moved all the and she's mo looking at this herd of zebra. And while we did that, we actually spotted two more lioness in the grass. So we're on the completely other side. Mine is just wiping the rain off of the <laughs> off of the, um, the lens there. And uh, these zebra are in a safe distance at the moment. There's one lioness, two lioness, a little bit closer. Well, I think the zebra might be a little bit out of reach. Just keeping my eyes trained on them. I wonder if one of these lionesses will make a move. Possibly not hungry enough to do so. Very opportunistic hunters. If the opportunity arises and it doesn't cost too much energy. But there we go, there's the other two. Not far away now. I think just a little bit out of reach. The lioness is, is there somewhere. We've lost her. Oh, she's at uh, one o'clock, Manu. Indeed. Oh, you got it, well done. That is indeed the paler of the two adults, who is uh, beautifully named Lychee and her sister Butternut. And Butternut is with the other young lioness that we saw off to the right. But this zebra herd seems to have evaded them, but they didn't put too much in too much effort, to be honest. Uh, we'll go back over to our lions and uh, see if we can avoid the rain that is starting to come down. We're probably going to have to batten down some hatches in a moment as it's starting to come in from the side. So bear with <laughs> Bear with us. Let's just get the car started. Okay, while it sounds like it is an afternoon of lions, 
And well, David has got some lions who seem they're actually busy eating. Well, finally I think I've gotten my biggest surprise for the day and this morning I met the sausage tree pride of lions not very far from where they are now but they're just lazing around and walking around but now I have found them with a kill and the whole pride is here and the best news is the two cubs are in the midst of these three females eating what a joy for me and also what a joy for James both of us went yay it has been a long journey here at one point where David go and exactly and basically what happened we were under some storm and just to see that cub or oh, those cubs feasting is there reminds me today could be a thanksgiving day to some you know north americans and because the joy i have with those cubs eating i'll say to all of you a very happy thanksgiving And I want to say these cubs have joined all of you in celebrating Thanksgiving as much as it's not very big or celebrated in Africa but I would imagine the sausage tree pride of lions and these cubs are joining all of you and wishing you a very happy Thanksgiving for those who have never joined us before this is called the sausage tree pride of Five females, three cubs. At the moment, I got four females, two cubs, and one of the cubs or one of the females with her one cub is not anywhere close. The one that's not here is called Limpy. She limps as she walks, and I think she's been limping all her life. And I guess the one closest to us is called the Kinktail. Kinktail, because if you look at her tail, she got a knot. Now, very good. Thank you, James. I think that's Kinktail laying down there. And we've been thinking she is pregnant and she is the oldest of the females here. About seven years old. Very sleepy, most likely after having eaten. Now, what they're eating is a Cape Buffalo. And that's exactly like what Steve had. Paula, yes, are you sleeping like lions later? Once you eat like this, the only thing you end up doing is just to have a snooze. Because lions, we have always thought, I think all of them are here, apparently. All the five females are here, because we've got three cubs there, not two, as I initially thought. So Paula, we have always thought, is only the males that tend to sleep and sleep and sleep. But also the females, given the same conditions as the males, they'll sleep the same number of hours we still have a few zebras and wilbys left around the mara triangle from the migration that has headed due south but now i think the lions are starting to prepare for i would say a little bit hard times once they lose the wildebeest they start hunting the big prey but seeing these cubs here i think sydney have a similar or different cubs in south africa Look at that, I have got uh, a pretty and a cub at the moment here. You can see the cub is busy now grooming the mother at the moment by the ears. Look at that, that is uh, quite a beautiful cub. So there's only one out here by the side. So this little one wants to play. So maybe the little one now is looking for some milk. You can see that it's searching for the teeth everywhere. A giraffe girl, this is so adorable indeed, look at that. You can see that it seems like the mother is not interested on the little one to suckle. Maybe she has just been there now, now. 
Now the little one wants to trim the, the nails. Very inquisitive a little one. Look at that. This little one is coming here now. So look at this uh, beautiful spots. So these little ones are growing and every time they are getting moved from one den to the next. It's normal. Soon as their scent starts to develop, they must have to move. You can see that uh, the David, they are getting so big already. That is true. What is making them growing so fast is that the mothers are so uh, they, they are so healthy and they are eating quite a lot of meat because that is what helps the mothers in order to facilitate the lactation process. You can see now the little one is having some uh, tooth toothbrush there against the sticks. <laughs> so that little one just have to be careful, as some of these trees can be so sharp. Now he's trying to eat that big one. So this is part of their play. So let's hope she doesn't get injured there. So the little ones, they do fight a lot for the dominance. <laughs> Yeah, he's trying to clean uh, the teeth at the moment. So these little ones, they fight a lot for dominance. Just from birth, already when they come out, you will see them starting to challenge each other for dominance. But here I saw the most dominant player is a cocky scab. Cocky scab is the one who is teasing all these other ones all the time, showing a level of dominance. So hyenas are, are unlike dogs, where when they've got a communal den, uh, each and every mother can just nest whoever is available to uh, have milk. Here by the hyenas, the specific mothers nest their own cubs. MDR, I didn't get your question clearly. MDR, hyenas are one of those animals who got well equipped before they come. When they come already, they have got teeth. And what is left is to use the teeth in order to fight for the dominance. So they don't go through this process of uh, teething outside. So the development of teeth and everything is coming to them before they come out. When they come out, they are already well equipped. Amazing, isn't it? Look at that. This little one is much interested in play. <laughs> So you can see the little one is even learning how to use, how to dig there. So these mothers, when they're doing things, little ones can easily learn. And this helps them when it comes to their survival skills. Little ones, most of the predators, they also they prey animals as well. They learn how to do things from the adults. Play is part of, it's an integral part of learning. When they are playing around is when they're equipping themselves and they won't forget. 
and now he's trying to uh, he's trying to pull hard. So the, the tooth for this, this tooth structure of the hyenas has, is so very much strong and they've got a very powerful jaw. They've got a strong um, muscle jaws. And the canagers, which are also responsible in order to pulverize the bones of the big antelope, such as the uh, blue wildebeest. Uh, Koki, I saw this another one where that little one is going. So after this one, I will move forward and get closer to see if uh, that one is Koki I saw on the other side. I couldn't manage to see the little one. From the hyena cubs to the lion cubs in the Masai Mara. Things are getting merrier here on Thanksgiving Day as all the three cubs are still chipping in and digging for the meat on this what used to be a buffalo and we are in the Mara Triangle in Kenya and for those of you who have never joined us before this pride of lions is called the sausage tree pride the sausage tree pride because we have known them to love climbing particular trees that we call the sausage tree the big trees, very solid, smooth branches where the lions can lie on them with the bellies without getting hurt. And they got good leaves, or big leaves rather, to give them some nice shade. Now the composition of the sausages are five females, and one female has one cub, which you think is about seven weeks old, and there's another female that have two cubs that we think are about 12 weeks old now. One of the female one of the cub initially had two and this is the second week we have not seen the second cub and we do not know what might have happened and but we believe now she is no more. Apparently all the three young cubs here are males and don't think that's a very good gender balance. Sometimes we have or we get a lioness getting one male, one female or two females but both females here got four cubs minus the missing one. I was talking earlier of the wildebeest, which, you know, make it very important for the lions to hunt them down when they're around during the migration, together with the zebras. But I believe 95% of them are gone. And now the lions will be walking on or hunting down for the next couple of months until maybe next year will be the big game, big, big game. I'm talking of buffaloes, elons, and giraffes. And I think they have already started to practice to eat buffalo. On. Earlier also we saw Steve who had another or a different pair of lions called the Olololo. And this morning they brought down a buffalo. I was here early this morning, not exactly this position or this location and these lions seemed hungry and I had a feeling they'd go for a hunt. MGR is always very good to hear your name and you're asking, will one pair of lions share a kill with another? I would say no. On a few occasions I have seen two different prides coming together on a kill and what they'll actually sometimes try to do is to stop eating and fight it out each other. We have seen bigger prides going to steal kills from smaller prides, but they don't give in easily. They'll always fast fight back. But of course, if they lose the battle, they'll try to grab a few pieces here and there as they take off, and then they'll be overwhelmed by the bigger pride and they go away. But ideally, they do not share kills. Same case will happen to a coalition of males. Sometimes we have seen 
if males' boundaries will, you know, overlap and they have kills, very, very random or seldom will see two coalitions sharing a male together. Cubs as early as six weeks, they'll be in good shape to start eating meat as much as they'll stick with their mothers for a long time. Still nursing? Hello. How are you? Your belly is so full. And of course, as they grow older, they eat more. A fully grown lioness like the one we are watching here could eat about 20% of its body weight. And you'll notice that our lions still look different is because we are in infrared. We're in black and white. It's not because they're black and white. It has gotten dark here in the Mara Triangle in Kenya. And that's why our lions look like that. And James have assembled his infrared. And infrared just helps us to see our animals without interfering or without shining any artificial light to them. They have an idea we are here but they cannot see us very well, but we see them very clearly, albeit seeing them in black and white. The one lioness in the foreground is very full. Buffers are, you'd like to know how lions survive the cold. Yesterday, we had a different pride of lions, the Olololos, and they were eating in the rain. The way they're designed, they've got very, of course, solid and thick skin, and the fur is able to trap the warmth in their bodies just to keep them warm. Much as it will rain or it gets cold, the fur forms a very good coat just to make sure they stay warm. You'd imagine maybe fur about an inch long or an inch and a half, and it's very close to each other. That is good enough just to keep them cold. I mean, to keep them warm. Occasionally, we get lions which would be suffering from mange, and when they suffer from mange, is a disease caused by some parasites called mites. And what they end up doing is just to keep scratching themselves, and in this process, they lose so much fur and the skin remains very bare. Those lions do not look very good because what would happen is the moment they don't have the fur to keep them warm, they very easily get cold. And just looking at these lions here that are feeding, you notice they all look in very good shape. The fire is very solid. And apologies, because we are using that makeshift window to see our lions, because it is still spitting. It is still spitting. And James have designed a window for us to get this very good action. We'll keep sitting here to enjoy them as they keep eating, especially the calves on this Thanksgiving. But in the meantime, we'll go back to Steve and find out what his lions are doing. Thanks, David. We are officially with the Awino Pride. That is 100% certain all five members are up and mobile. Uh, they're after that herd of zebra that we saw earlier. The zebra are all a little bit confused over, over the open plains. And the lions are just on my right hand side. Just going to move up a little bit, see if we can get one on the IR lights in a second. They're heading straight for that herd of zebra. Just park in between these trees. You'll be able to see at least one of the lionesses now at 2 o'clock. There's one of them. She's moving directly towards where there is a, that large herd of zebra that's all grouped together off to our left hand side. We're not going to shine any lights. The zebras are moving ahead of us. She's keeping her eye on them. Pay attention to see what the rest of the pride do. They are all five members. And that wound on that young male is looking much better. He was actually running and jogging just before and tackling his sister. So the wound is still a bit superficial on the, on the surface. You can still see it's a, a wound, but seems to have healed nicely. It was a bit of a gaping hole before. But with numerous licks, from the saliva, there is almost, well, a very nice anti, antiseptic cream in lion saliva. Well, it works for lions anyway. And clearly didn't work for that last buffalo. 
He certainly bled out. She certainly bled out. There we go. There's the third. Who's the another one? Okay, well, they're moving ahead of us here, and the zebras are moving over here ahead. So, this could be very, very exciting. We're just going to bumble through, through the long grass here and see exactly what we can come about. But it seems like Sydney has uh, once again found for all of you the little chief. The little chief is just here by the Viotella pen where he caught one of the impalas last night. He's drinking by the very same water hole he's using in order to attract the animals. So this uh, little chief here might also cause another damage. He might catch something again because other dams are dry and animals are depending on this water hole a lot. I can see another small head of impala here and not very far away from where we are, also making their way in to the dam. Look at that. So those impalas, they are at, they are just at about 250 meters away from him at the moment. The wind is on his favor, but he have not yet spotted any of them. So the chances of him catching another impala, they are very much high. He caught two already. He caught the, uh, the adults as well as the little one. So now he's relaxed after drinking here. You can see he's right at the dam wall. And he's too clever because he's against some of the uh, dead trees so that he can be able to hide for in case something is coming. So he's just looking at the Egyptian geese uh, on the uh, ground there. He's on the high elevation at the moment. Yeah, this is uh, beautiful. So now let's quickly go back to David with the lions having dinner tonight. Well, the dynamics here have changed and there is a male that just arrived. Now, this male does not belong to the sausage coalition. It belongs to another coalition called Oldonio Paek. Oldonio Paek. And the last few days we have seen him hanging around with these females of the sausage tree. Now, you notice as soon as he got here, the females gave way. The cubs have also left. And this is how the lion's hierarchy work. This is the pecking order. Once the males arrive, everybody gives way. You can see one lioness there, we just see her being snoozy. And then there's that one in front, that one with the cub, very good James. And she has walked her cubs away. And another one that is sleepy there. And what they will do, they will wait until this big boy will finish eating and then they go back to the kill. This is how things work in the lion's kingdom. And they don't even fight about it. As soon as they saw him arrive, they slowly started to peel away. And this is a very good. And from the Mara Triangle, on behalf of Steve, I'll be saying a very goodbye to all of you and a very happy Thanksgiving Day. Back to South Africa. I am here with Hosanna who doesn't follow any of the orders. Who starts first between him and Tingana? When Tingana is available, it's obvious uh, Tingana will come first. But here by the lepers, there's no orders. Because normally they are solitary and they catch a prey just by themselves. No competition at all. You can see that when this leopard is lying down like that, it's not easy for an animal from the other side to spot him. So those impalas are still moving, come, coming closer. So here we might see something happening uh, this evening. You can see he's trying to pick up the 
the noise from the air, it's just that it is very, very much windy at the moment here where we are, which might make it very difficult for him to even hear those impalas coming. I can see that he have not yet spotted the impalas and they are all moving towards this direction. It's just that they are taking it slow because they are feeding as they are walking. And he's looking at the opposite side. Oh, there's even big elephant coming here to the very same area. He might get chased by the elephants at any time. Uh, thank you very, very much for all your questions and comments. It has been very nice having you this afternoon. So it was a, a tremendous afternoon, uh, coupled with quite a lot of sighting all the way from the Masai Mara in Kenya, as well as the western side of the Greater Kruger National Park. Let's meet again. To